I guess the last thing that we need to talk about is safety and some of the things that uh, we've done to make sure that these things are actually safe to use. Uh, here you can see a couple of uh, cartridges without their heads. Or, and th th these were from uh, a couple of tests conducted to see how the mousing field handles uh, gas escaping from the cartridge in the event of a case head separation. Now these case head separations are obviously very se severe. The entire head came off. Usually, not, uh, yeah, that's not usually what happens. You know, in, in, in normal use, if case head separation is normal, which it's not. But, uh, but uh, in any event, the the way if a shooter was to be holding the rifle and uh, experiences a case head separation uh, so provided he's wearing eye protection he should walk away from it without any trouble at all the flange the, the, the bolt shroud has a flange that basically that basically obstructs any rearward moving gas or particles uh, that, that are you know moving towards the shooter uh, that, that's, a, that's a good obstruction. So, but we will still see gas emanate from the ejection port and the uh, the port for the, that's cut into the left side of the receiver for the bolt stop and the ejector. The receiver is also vented on both sides, giving the gas some place to go. Early is better than not giving it any place to go. You don't. There's no such thing as you know sealing up a bolt action. You can't. These things don't have seals in them, so the the gas has to escape. It has to go somewhere. So case head separation not a problem. Also, uh, another test was conducted in which we took a, an old DTA barrel, chambered it for a 300 WSM. There you can see the case head the portion of the case head that remains, the rest of the case is still stuck in this barrel. Basically what we did, we fired a uh, live round, a live uh, factory 300 WSM in a barrel containing a cleaning rod, a brass cleaning rod. The bullet and the cleaning rod made it about eight inches down the barrel before coming to stop. I believe what happened, uh, the barrel swelled a little bit and the, the bullet and the cleaning rod probably well, the bullet definitely dilated to fill the swelling more, and as it progressed down the barrel, it, it encountered uh, the constriction of the, the that is now the normal the normally sized bore ahead of the swelled re region, and there, there wasn't adequate gas pressure at the time to to force it all the way through the barrel because all the gas basically escaped. Uh, through the breach, and when this happened, we uh, we saw a big blast of gas emanate from the ejection port that was powerful enough to take a uh, the the extractor, which is made from uh, 4340 alloy steel, heat treated to 53 Rockwell. So the material the the the, the material from which this extractor is made is has a minimum yield strength of 260,000 uh, pounds per square inch. It's a very, very strong steel, yet you can see, you know, how powerful uh, the blast must have been to basically turn it into this useless little piece of metal. It did not launch it from the receiver. It's the, it all stayed together. The uh, the forward portion of the extractor was remained trapped between the 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 inner wall of the receiver and the bolt head. The bolt head, you can see, did pretty well. The, the the weaker of the two lugs, basically the one having the slot cut through it, and that slot accommodates the ejector, right? The weaker lug bears against the stiffer portion of the receiver and therefore has to carry the greater load, right? So the, 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 this, the slotted lug didn't do quite as well as... Uh, the lug that is diametrically opposed to it. The bolt 
did hardly moved back in the receiver at all. It wasn't set back very far. I believe the the, the six o'clock lug was effective in preventing that. Uh, so it stayed in the receiver during the test. The bolt was not ejected. Uh, even if these lugs were to fail completely, uh, it, it would have still been unlikely to launch the bolt because the handle of the bolt. Now, the, the, and you got to bear in mind that the bolt body is made from essentially a solid piece of steel. The handle engages, you know, this slot that's cut into the receiver, right? So even if the two forward lugs failed, you still have the handle engaged. However, they didn't. Uh, everything worked wonderfully, and it, it, the bolt head did its job. And you can see, you can see that. A lot of people think of bolt lugs, uh, when bolt lugs fail, they shear off. That's not really the case. Um, they sort of get mashed into the receiver. <laughs> it's really the, the failure mode you'd expect to see, you know, local uh, plastic deformation of the lug and the receiver. Shearing, the, the, the way bolt lugs are configured uh, upon the bolt head and within the receiver, it doesn't really... It doesn't really lend itself to shear failure. So what you, you I, there's a lot of stuff on the internet about bolt lug shearing. It's none of it's new, not, to my knowledge anyway. It, none of it's really true. So 